Hello everyone, and you're very welcome to today's video where we are going into bulking again, but this time we're covering your questions. I threw up a Q&A box on Instagram after the last video on bulking, on my process and progress this past year, and it gave you guys the opportunity to ask any questions you're curious about, you want to know, and we're going to dive straight into it today. Today. So, first question. Did you track calories or did you take a more intuitive approach? Good question. I actually covered this in the last video, so that just tells me you didn't watch the video. Schlummer. Queer bank, go ahead. Oh. Oh. I did take a more intuitive approach, and for those of you who don't know what a more intuitive approach is, it just means you're kind of, you're eyeballing it, and you're sort of guessing, in a way. Now, I don't recommend that for most people, and you have to factor in my experience I've been doing this thing for a long time. I also had a period of tracking calories for two years. And you have to take into consideration the place I was in prior to bulking. And what I mean by that is I had very, I had structure, I had very good structure and routine nailed down. I had a meal template in my head that I was following every day. So three meals, the same breakfast, same type of lunch and dinner. Because I was pretty much sticking to that all last year prior to this bulk, I'm doing the same thing now, same meal template. So I know from last year, the portion sizes, I know myself how to like just to increase those portion sizes or just add a little bit more onto each meal or add another you know, few treats after the meal. It was easy for me to do that. So I don't necessarily recommend everybody take a more intuitive approach. If you're not that experienced, then I would track calories. It would just make things a lot easier on yourself. And by taking a more intuitive approach, I'm not just like winging it. I still have to track and measure my body weight because if the body weight's going up too fast, then I know I need to pull the portions back a little bit. You could argue that I could be in a better spot if I did track calories, but like I said in the previous video, I just wasn't arsed and it seems to be going all right so far. What's the difference of this book you were doing compared to other books? That's a very good question. And I had to think about this one. I would have to say the biggest difference is just myself. I'm older, I'm wiser, I'm more experienced, I have more knowledge, and I realize now that there's a lot I don't know. Whereas back then, when I knew less, I thought I knew everything. Um, so that's, that has to be, that's the biggest difference. I'm approaching this with more maturity and more knowledge. Like, when I started, I don't think, if people are starting to try and change their shape, I don't think it's the right move to go for a cut or a bulk straight away. Context dependent, this is case by case. Generally, I don't think it's a good idea. I think people should start really somewhere around their maintenance calories and work on building structure, routine, and focusing on the right things. Whereas back then I was just focused on all the wrong things. And that got me into some trouble because I would have bulked when I was younger, but to be honest, maybe I was disguising some disordered eating behaviors as bulking and justifying eating a lot of shit food. Um, whereas in, the reality was I couldn't control myself half the time because I was going through these cycles of cutting and bulking and I wasn't prepared for them. These are extremes. They're extremes on opposite ends of the spectrum. And yeah, I, I, I just wasn't ready for that back then. Like I started with a cut, got really lean, didn't know what the aftermath that followed, you know, you're starving, you've deprived yourself of certain foods for so long. I couldn't contain myself when I was eating foods and I was eating all around me. And then I was, I was gaining fat very fast and I had, had attached my identity to the, to the way I looked, which was extremely lean. And I was just caught up my head. My head was fried. Mentally, I wasn't in a great place. Hormonally, I probably wasn't in a great place either. So, I have to, I, the biggest difference is just me. I think I'm ready to do something like this now. And now I know to thread, thread carefully as well. Like you're doing this, you're not out of the woods completely. I have to be aware of some of the habits and the way, some of the habits that I'm gaining during this book. They might be hard to shake. I have to be aware of, you know, the, the challenge of body dysmorphia, looking at myself now, being a little bit more pudgy. These things, you have to be, you have to be ready for this stuff. And for example, like when I was younger, I would have thought that you just need to 
eat and eat whatever you want. And we know that's not the case now. We know that first and foremost, you need to, you need to know what you're doing with training. You need to have, you know what you're doing with your programming, exercise selection, good exercise technique, how to train in close proximity to failure, because that is a skill a lot of people are lacking, and how to progress in your lifts. Like I thought, I would have thought I had an understanding on a lot of that stuff back then. I really didn't. And now, like I said, I do. Um, so I'm just focused on the right stuff now. Not perfect by any means, but a lot better. I don't think I, I'd be as good of a coach if I didn't go through these things and suffer and come out the other end. I hope that answers your question. That was a really good question. Question number three, how long of a bulk did you have planned for? Was there a particular body weight goal in mind? How long did I initially, at the start of the year, I said I was gonna do this for six to nine months, which is a decent timeline. Um, if you're trying to make the bulk any way sort of productive, you need to do it for a while. Because like 12 weeks, it's not like a fat loss phase, where 12 weeks, someone can lose a lot of fat, but in 12 weeks, someone, you're not really gonna build a lot of muscle. I had planned for six to nine months. I'm now past the nine month mark. I'm coming into month 10 of this year, even though I've been doing this like, yeah, I, I, was, I started this really before Christmas, but like this year I'm on month 10 of this book and I'm gonna go all the way until Christmas and then assess things at the start of next year. I'll assess the situation, how I'm looking, what I wanna do. But I'm giving this time because it's invested. You're investing in it, you're getting stronger, you're building more muscle. So longer the better. As of now, we're gonna go for the full year of doing this. Was there a particular body weight in mind? Nope. I, you need to be careful with that because you can get, you can almost get lost in chasing a, a, a certain body weight. Like I'm close to hundred kilos. And if I was really caught up on the number, then I could get to hundred kilos, but I might've just put on way more fat that, than what's necessary. So I had no goal weight in mind. I'm 98, 99 kilos. It will be cool to reach the 100 kilo mark like that that's a great milestone for a natural lifter so what of my stature like i'm five nine um so that'll be cool that'll be a nice little milestone but i want to hit it the right way i don't want to brush it good question next question question number we'll be on four when you're training do you train to failure on all your working sets or just the last one good question i'm really liking the questions So we need to first define what failure is and I need to correct myself on the last video. I sometimes start talking and I don't even realize what I'm saying. On the last video, I, I was saying we need to define what failure is and I said it's when you cannot complete another rep. No, when you can't complete another rep, that's just, that's um, zero reps in the tank. Training to failure is when you can't complete that rep. <laughs> I get lost in these tangents. I was watching that back over when I posted it. I was like, oh, God damn it. But yeah, so training to failure is when you can't complete the rep you're trying to complete. I don't go to failure that often um, with compound movements, especially. With arm training, with arm work, I have been going to failure. But a lot of the time, I'm just training really close to failure. And am I trying to do that with every, all of my sets? For the most part, yes, but for some lifts, no. Like for example, my bench press, training, training to feel, if I, I'm trying to like really get my strength up on the bench and I'm not really doing it for muscle growth. I'm trying to just get like really strong and lift stupid numbers. That's my goal with benching. Training to failure isn't the best, training to failure isn't the best approach if you're trying to get really strong. So with my bench press, I've had to leave reps in the tank and yeah, definitely, if I'm doing like three sets of bench, the first two sets, I'm leaving reps in the tank. The last one, I'm probably leaving one rep in the tank, maybe two. But then for everything else, like for most of my lifts, I am training until I can't, I'm training until I can't complete another rep. So that's like training with zero reps in the tank. Not failure, but training with zero reps in the tank. And then like that, with my isolation work, sometimes I do train to failure. Training to failure is a good idea if you wanna grow muscle. But more importantly, focus on progression. So just focus on your progression over time. You don't necessarily need to train to absolute failure to grow muscle. 
you need to more so be work, be thinking I need to progress over time. So I would say focus more on progression, but of course, of course, train really close to failure. Okay, do that too. They're both important. I hope I answer. I hope I did a good job answering that. Will you ever compete again? Is the next question. You know, after the experiences I had when I was younger, you know how I said I struggled and I started with cutting and bulking cycles and it put me in a pretty bad spot. I, once I got out the other side of that and then I was living like living my life and not really, fo at kind of like at maintenance calories and I'm just training for the love of training and seeing my body recomp and then just being lean for like the last four or five years. I was like, this is incredible. This is where, this is the place I wanted to be in. I'm never going to compete again for that reason. I never want to go back to that. However, uh, now that I'm, now that I am doing this bulk, I'm kind of like dipping my toes in the extremes again. I will, thoughts of competing are crossing my mind. I'll just say that. Last question. How do I keep my strength after a bulk? Good question. I let you know when I, I let you know when I try to do it myself. Um, that's a that's a great question, and it's that should be a priority after a book, that's because first and foremost, you need to get stronger in your book. So if you're doing a book and you have gotten stronger, great job, great success. Because that's where a lot of people mess up. That's where I messed up in the past, not focusing on getting stronger, but just shoveling food into my mouth and thinking I'm going to get big. Even just being aware of that is already we're off to a great start if we're just aware that we need to try and maintain our strength after the bulk is over so i think what i i while i'm not while i have to go through this myself i am thinking about this and i think first and foremost let's not go from a bulk straight into a cut let's maybe pull the calories back a tad and do like a maintenance period obviously if i pull the calories back a tad i'm going to lose weight but I'm probably going to maintain, you know, a higher weight. I'll probably lose a few kilograms and maintain, let's say, somewhere around 94, 95 kilograms. Maintain that weight and tr keep trying to progress on strength as well as maintain it. Keep trying to progress it. And hopefully what happens is you lose a little bit of body fat. And if you give it time, you might gain a little bit more muscle. So you might almost experience a body recomp. So let's say when I was bulking and I got to 94, I would be looking to compare... 94 kilos when I was bulking to now 94 kilos post bulk maintaining and hopefully the photo after the bulk's over that photo on the right looks better than the photo on the left something else I will consider that I've, on, I've only actually made this change in my routine now and it was my brother Kyle who brought this to my attention he said I need to time he said I should time my carbs around my training a lot more to get the most out of it and I wasn't really doing that this past year. I, I have my typical breakfast and I go train. I didn't even think to like have like more carbs before my training session. Some sessions I did, um, but to like make it like a fixed thing that you're having carbs before you train. I think I'm gonna implement that now. And after the bulk is over and what I'm trying to maintain, I will keep, I will keep that in. You know, I'll keep, I'll give myself my best possible chance at being, I'm trying to maintain my strength by having carbs before the session, being have caffeine, be filled up with water, have a good sleep the night before. Just be ready to train hard. But I think it's just, I think how we're going to keep our strength after our bulk is by first and foremost making that the priority, and just keep trying to progress in the training and don't go straight into a crazy cut. Let's try and solidify our progress a little bit more, and almost try and experience a body recomp, whether that's right or wrong. That's how I'm thinking about this. If that changes, I will come on here and talk about it and give you the update on that. As far as questions go, that was it. Um, really good questions. I hope I answered all your questions and you are satisfied. Shorter video today, which is great because the last one was really long. It was half an hour, but I spoke for an hour. I spoke for one hour and it took me ages to edit that and cut it down. So. It's nice that we had a shorter video today. Um, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone watching the videos. I really appreciate it. It's really nice to do long form content again and talk about things that I'm passionate about and hopefully I can give value 
through my own experience and what I know to you guys and you can benefit from that. So it's been really cool doing that. The feedback has been really good and hopefully I will continue to deliver. Chat soon, train hard.